Hoover. Come here. Hey, come here. Come on. Yeah. Okay, can you sit? Stay. Good boy. This big but super sensitive guy is about to go for his first plane ride. And we worked really hard with the main objective to just get him comfortable in and around the airplane. He's still accepting cookies, so that's a good sign. <laughs> when he stops accepting cookies, you know he's not happy. Yeah. This episode will share how we tried to make this somewhat overwhelming experience go well. Super hesitant to take a cookie now. So. Yeah, I guess we have, we'll have to amend the passenger briefing if you have a dog. Who, who takes care of the dog? Who helps the dog out? My hope is to get flying a lot with this guy in the future. His name, after all, is Hoover. My dog Hoover has been around airplanes a fair bit. And although he does great in cars, I've never had access to an airplane that he could fit in. Until now. Aviation legend Bob Hoover died the day this puppy was born. I'd already planned to name him after Bob Hoover, despite the fact that general public think I named him after the vacuum cleaner, which isn't entirely inaccurate. Anyway, he grew super fast, and this is my first time getting him flying, and here's what we did to try to make it work. So I equipped myself with a container full of his favorite treats, the hearing protection that I've been training him to wear at home for weeks in advance, his portable water bottle, a towel and blanket in case he barfed, and a couple options for harnessing him in the plane. And for many dogs, I suspect a crate is a good option, but for him, that's just not on the table. You wanna get in? Let's go. Can you do it? Jump. Jump. Too high? Is it too high for you? There you go. Give you a little help. <laughs> good boy. Okay. Okay. He's all right. Yeah, he just, he just knows it's different. Yeah. Yeah, you want the whole seat though, huh? You gonna be able to, can you move up a bit for me, buddy? Huh? I'm gonna sit beside you. If I can. You gonna let me in? Okay. Here. Come over here. You're good. <laughs> yeah, he's not a small dog. Ugh. I'm gonna sit with you, okay? <laughs> yeah, he's not leaving me room at all. I wonder if I should try to get into this seat, maybe. We should get club seating going on in this. Okay, I'm gonna put his ear protection on and then I'll juggle seats while we're warming up. It's gonna be wild, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, well, then that's what I'm going to do. I think I'll end up in the middle here. Yeah, see, if these seats were turned around... And you Maybe can, no problem, yeah. No problem. Yeah, that's definitely the way to go. Blake had planned for basically all possible loading distribution configurations. you got to love the PA-32. This thing is going to rock for family trips. It's not super fast, but you can load it up. It's one of the few things the RV-14 that we're building can't do. But well, my main objective was just to get him comfortable in the plane. Exactly. All right, I'm good to start whenever you are. Stand by, I'm just gonna put his yep. ears on. Okay. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy, yeah. Okay, his ears are on. I'm not on the intercom yet, so I'll let you know when I get there. Yeah, don't worry, it's not very loud. Any cookie? The best measure of Hoover's anxiety is his cookie hesitation level. So I'll be watching that. Okay. Okay. Hey, Bear. You okay? You okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm going to start. Yep. Of course, one of my GoPros crashed at that exact moment, so I was distracted from seeing his first attempt to get his ears off but I quickly remembered the priority was to assess his status and deal with cameras later. No question he was anxious and I wanted to stay ahead of that. You good? Yeah, all right. And so far, so good. Blake is a local pilot buddy that I've known since way before Flight Chops and he recently bought this new to him PA-32. I helped him get it home from halfway across Canada as he's not yet instrument rated. And being a fairly new instrument rated pilot myself, it was definitely a challenge to fly this original six-pack panel with no GPS, 
Now, of course, we did bring ForeFlight for the additional situational awareness while trying to manage this thing with the original autopilot from 1971. Back on board with Hoover, I decided to take his ears off to give him a break while we were warming up at idle power. I'll stay here until we're moving and then I'll get into that seat and figure out the belt. Sure. Now we're, I'm still waiting for the oil temp just to come up, just to, for the needle to move before... Oh, it's still on the peg? <laughs> yeah. But the uh, pressure came up pretty fast, yeah. I saw, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I think one day I'm going to come out here and just run through the checklist that I made on, on uh, for flight. Right. And just see if this, uh, if it makes sense logically, because I try to make it like a flow. Right, so you move things around a little bit? It's no secret that ForeFlight is a longtime supportive sponsor, and one of my favorite features definitely is the digital checklist. Trying to use physical checklists in the Harvard cockpit is far from ideal, so I've enjoyed customizing them for that airplane. How's he doing back there? Yeah, he's totally well, I'm just got one ear off so I can hear how loud it is. It's not loud, so... Yeah, yeah he was trying to shake off his uh, ears earlier because it wasn't really comfortable. But yeah, it's not comfortable, I don't think, for him, but yeah. it wasn't necessary yet. All right, I'm just going to move into the sun. Yeah. I'll put his ears on. Good boy. Here you go. Good? Yep. yep. Okay. So we have time to kill for a second. You want to do a quick briefing on the plan here? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So, obviously, today's flight is about a dog. Yep. So, um, I'm going to try to move to this seat and buckle in uh, during the run-up. Yep. And then I'll confirm before the pre-takeoff check that I am belted in. Yep. He is what he is. Yep. Secure here, and I got him safe. Cool. He seems chill. I think when it gets loud, it might be a little different, so I'll watch it during the run-up. Yep. Let's find to do one big circuit, okay. and on final, uh, we'll know by that point if he's not happy or not. Yep. If he's happy, we'll just... Or overshoot, yeah. And then if you want to... Like, I mean, I don't know how much airtime. Uh, really, if we're up for a bit, I'm happy with that. Okay. So, I mean, even one circuit might be enough, frankly, but if you want to keep her go cruise a bit and warm up the plane, that's fine. Take it to the tracks area. Okay. Uh, but we'll know in the one circuit how he's, how he's doing. Going to be, yeah, and then I'll just look for you for direction if you want me to land or continue on. Uh, yeah. But uh, I'll be concentrating on flying, and then you just keep an eye on the dog. And I'll be looking for traffic, of course, yeah. as well. Uh, but yeah, primarily I'm going to try to keep the dog from freaking out. Awesome. And, uh, got a blanket back here and a towel for barf or anything else that happens. <laughs> but I think yeah, don't worry too much about that. Okay. Awesome. All right, cool. But so far he's just chilling. So this is good. Nice. He's accepted his ears. Um, I'm going to do the run-up. I'm ready to do the run-up if you want to... Yep. Yeah, he's noticing, but it's okay. It's okay. This episode primarily focuses on Hoover's experience. We're sharing what we did to make it go well for him, what we learned on this flight, and inviting you guys to share comments about anything you've done flying with dogs. And I'm also not going to cover real-time, regular airplane procedures. Lots of other episodes do that, including the upcoming content flying this airplane home from Calgary. And since I'm on the insurance now, I expect to be flying this airplane a lot more with Hoover and my family, so lots of great stuff coming in this airplane in the future. Okay, so I'm gonna move. Good boy, you're okay. Okay. I'm gonna start taxing if- Yeah, you're good. You're okay. okay, buddy. Lie down. Look at that good boy. I'm so proud of him. Over. Good boy. All right, still accepting cookies. Good. All right, you ready to go? Ready to go. All right. Funville traffic, making key hotels on the roll to one staying in the circuit button mill. Okay. And I'm sure by now a bunch of you have noticed that I forgot to connect his harness to the seatbelt. It's actually a walking harness, so I need a better solution for this. 
Oh man, this thing flies quick, eh? Yeah, especially when it's like density the altitude is like minus 2,000 feet. The full traffic, Gulf of the River, India is currently above Victoria Square. He's enjoying the view. We'll be, going in. We'll be flying over Hatton Field during the mid-left. What do you think of that? Is that weird? Uh, I'm gonna get off of a cookie. Yeah. Hey, he's lying down, so that's good. That's good. Final traffic, Golf of Duck Hill, India, turning final to one low approach. A little hesitant. Oh, he still took it. How's he doing? He's good. Yeah? I mean, he's a little bit uneasy, but he's not freaking out, so it's a win so far. Ah, uh, I hate winter flying because it just doesn't want to sink. <laughs> Which I guess is a good thing, right? Yeah, right, full prop. Yeah, so as far as I'm concerned, if you want to go miss and go ahead and just take her to the practice area and give, sure. her, give her a run. Yep. I think he's fine. Butterville traffic, Quebec Yankee Hotel is turning uh, final 2-1. Uh, we'll do an overshoot and then depart to the north, but no. Bunville traffic, Quebec Yankee Hotel is in the overshoot for 2-1, northbound departure, Bunville. How's he doing? He's alright. Alright. I don't think he's loving it, but he's not, like, freaking out. Like, usually the bad sign is when their mouth is open and they're panting and Yeah, stuff. they start salivating. So there's none of that. He's looking like he's, like, not sure of these sensations. Yeah. But he's not shivering or anything weird, so... That might as well have been some foreshadowing because we're about to get there. I think the low-level turbulence was concealing that he was actually starting to shiver intermittently. Can we climb a little higher so it's smoother? Uh, probably. Yep, okay. Oh, that's better, eh? Yeah, that's funny how just a 500-foot difference. Yep. Not loving it, but he's not freaking out, I guess is the well, way I would describe it. And that's, I guess, the first time, right? Yeah. Yeah. He's not, like, um, worried about his ears, so that's good. But this is when I noticed he'd begun shivering. Yeah, so this is, like, this is where I spent my many hours learning how to be a pilot. Yeah, that's cool. Right up here. It's amazing. Today's Tuesday, right? So on the weekend, if you come up here, just like the, the the lake is packed full of ice fishing huts and people like snowmobiling around. Yep. I don't see anything today. So would you would you feel confident enough to land on the ice if you had to? Oh yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, this is what my buddy Andrew got up to the following week while I was editing this video. His channel is called Setting North, and he flies with his dog Maverick all the time. Right, so what do you want to do? Do you want to? He's actually shivering now. But I don't know if it's because he's cold or he's just kind of starting to the shock is setting in of the <laughs> of the different situation. Yeah. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, mission accomplished for his exposure. Okay. And whatever you need to do for like airplane, get rid, get rid, burn the carbon off, whatever. Yeah. Should. Cool. Okay. Well, we'll, get, we'll go up to Coke's Bay and then we'll turn around and head back. Okay. Yeah, he's shivering now. I'm impressed. He's uh. No, like, no barking, no freaking out. You know, sometimes he freak out at the window and like, <laughs> run around and. Yeah, he's a good dog. He's got a really good demeanor. Like, I'm very confident with him being off leash places and stuff. Like, yeah. He's good with kids. The, the biggest problem with him is that he loves to love people and he'll jump up and like try to give you a hug. I'm 90 pounds of dog that's getting up to your shoulders. Like, he could put his hands on my shoulders, right? Yeah. So he'll knock someone down by accident. Are you current enough to just call it a full stop, or did you want to do a couple touch and goes? Yeah, no, I will do a, we'll do a full stop. Okay, yeah. Uh, I flew last weekend. Yeah, then let's call it. Yeah. I think that's good. He's uh, definitely shivering, and I don't know if it's because he's cold or because he's like... Just, scared. Well, yeah, something like just a different situation. Yep. So I forgot to connect the belt to his harness after telling myself I was going to do that. So that's the only screw up, is that if I had done that, he would go flying. But yep. Anyway, so he's loose. I forgot about that. I was just thinking about the pre-take or the pre-landing checks, the seatbelts. I'm like, I'm good. Oh, dog's not good. Bunville <laughs> uh. traffic, uh, Quebec Yankee Hotel is heading to the north at 2,000 feet. Going to overfly the field and join the mid-left downwind for 2-1, Bunville. Super hesitant to take a cookie now. So. Yeah, okay, well. He still took it. We're good, we're good. So I decided to scrub the plan B portion of this mission, which was to swap seats with Blake, 
and bang out a couple patterns to reset my currency in this airplane. I can do that another time, I just didn't want to prolong Hoover's stress. One of these days, Steve, one of these days. <laughs> I, th I think it's you. <laughs> a little fast, a little long. Yeah, and that's just it. That's my problem with this plane, it's fast and long. Yeah. Good boy. Good boy, you did it. You did it, yeah. You ready to get out? You ready to get out? You did a good job. Sit. Stay. Stay. Good boy. Good job. Yeah, good job. So I think that was a success. Hopefully we'll get flying with Hoover again soon. And until then, keep your flight chops sharp.